Today's video is about how I use my small workshop guy's saw stallion as a gigantic flexible mortising jig. Hola woodworkers, Paul Carlson here, small workshop guy. Very often if I'm doing a project and that involves cutting a lot of identical mortises in various pieces, then I will take the time to build a template or a pattern and then I will use a bushing guide. The problem is that my pattern has some depth to it and so if I need a really deep cut then that might limit how far down with a certain bit I can go. Uh, I have an alternative, in fact, is I use it often when I don't want to stop and build a template uh, because that takes time. With this setup that I'm going to show you, I can use these sawhorses, which I call saw stallions. That's a set of sawhorses that have match fit dovetail grooves in the top, in the sides of the top, in, and in all of the faces of the legs and the bottom trestle. The beauty of that is I can use these match fit dovetail clamps for a lot of flexible clamping capability as well as use my regular DeWalt clamps because when you're using saw horses or saw stallions you've got a lot of places to clamp things because you got all this room underneath. Just try to do that on a workbench. But once I get this set up for one piece then it's really easy for me to do identical pieces where the mortise is going to be in the same place. This line is where I line up the beginning of the mortise. So I can use a roofing square or a speed square here and I can line it up to my index line and then see if I've got that lined up perfectly with the beginning of my mortise. Once I get that set with my clamps and the beauty of clamps is I could either be using the, the leg here or I can use the slot here. In this case I needed to use this slot because this piece is not over the leg. So that this gave me an alternative. On this end over here I couldn't use the slot so I used the leg. So lots of capabilities. In order to make sure the router stops at that ending point I happen to know that on that part of my router, the leading edge, that I have a 2 and 5 eighths distance from the edge of the half inch bit, and again this would change for each bit, but the edge of the half inch bit to the edge of the router base. And so if I set a stop block there, then when the router base runs into this speed square, it will stop moving and it'll stop where it's supposed to stop on that end. Get that lined up with that stop spot. Clamp her down. My router is going to start here and then run till it runs into this and that should go from here to here. The beauty is once you do this once for one cut, since you're going to use the same reference face for all of your mortises and your pieces hopefully are dimensioned to be exactly identical, then you won't have to make this adjustment again. Make sure you follow the manufacturer's instructions for how far you need your router bit to be in the collet. Uh, for this Bosch, they say I must have that router bit in there 5 eighths of an inch or more. So after all of that setup, then there is my first mortise. Check that out, make sure everything's working well. I like that. You know, if anything, stay short because then you can square it off. You're gonna square it off anyway with your chisel. So stay a little short of your intended line. Don't go a little long, otherwise you'll have a gap depending on how you do your tenon. But better to be short and then chisel it out to your line than to be long because you're not going to chisel it back <laughs> if you follow me. All right, so I have that workpiece and, and I do that mortise. Let's say I have an identical workpiece, uh, then I would just take the workpiece out, put in the identical workpiece. Everything stays the same. I just line that mortise in the new workpiece up with this line here and then I cut it and then I put in the other one and I cut it and I put in another one and I cut it and all of my setup here stays the same. Uh, you know, other than releasing these and releasing the workpiece and putting in a new one. Now, I want to keep my reference face for my edge guide the same. So I got the little uh, carrot here marking that. 
and this is 90 degrees to this face, so that's my reference face. So what I'm trying to say is I don't want to take this out here and then rotate it around to where this is now up against there because then my edge guide would be on a different face. So I need to actually bring things down I would then simply take all of the pieces where I'm going to have an identical mortise and an identical type of piece and I would just simply take this piece out, leave all of this the same, put in the new piece and then uh, tighten everything down and then do my, do my mortise. Put in a new piece, do my mortise. Put in a new piece, do my mortise. Maybe I have that do that eight times or something. But I never have to change my setup after that first one. So no template, no bushing guides, no wide base uh, keeping me from getting a deep plunge. Uh, no clamping problems because I got every possible clamping configuration a guy could, could or a gal could want and uh, work slick as can be. And that is how I use the small workshop guys, saw stallions, in order to cut a lot of them really nice mortises. If you find my videos helpful at all, do me a favor. Please subscribe. Please uh, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, uh, hit the thumbs down twice to emphasize that you don't like it. And then uh, leave a comment for me if you would and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to support me on Patreon, there's a Patreon link down below. And the plans for my saw stallions or on my website at smallworkshopguy.com. And it's got a grand total of $9.99 for SketchUp plans and 12 how-to build videos. Small Workshop Guy, signing off. This is, I've got a Bosch uh, router. This is a three and a half horsepower one. I've got an edge guide on it. It's not three and a half horsepower. I'm just trying to talk while I'm saying here. It's a two and a quarter horsepower, actually. In other words, it's a big Bosch. It's a powerful one. And that'll give me the starting point. Again, you can probably just uh, get your router plunged down where you need it to be. Come on. Just because I'm on film, that doesn't mean you got to stop working.